Okay, uh, <laughs> here I am to talk about, um, Jesus, <laughs> it's like completely losing it. I'm here to talk about the Mothers of Invention. This is Frank Zappa's, uh, one of his very famous songs called Trouble, Trouble Coming Every Day. And uh, I put it in because, partly because, mostly because Hare mentions it. And he talks about how important it is to them. Jeez. Um, in Vietnam. What's important, partly, is... Sorry, I had the lyrics open for a second here, and then apparently I lost them. Okay, I got them. Uh, so what's interesting about this, Zappa was uh, extremely astute about the media. He was just... Oh, man, he was smart, and he was so articulate. When he would get on... Uh, Radio. I, I heard him interviewed a couple of times about censorship in music on radio. That is censorship in music, discussed on radio. <laughs> and uh, he was oh, he was he was he was a sharp, quick guy, and he was really. Um, and so here he is. Um, and the, I put this particular link in because it's somebody who makes a connection between the uh, essentially the white on black violence of the middle of the, the, the civil rights movement in 1965 and um, because it's there's still a long way to go at that point I mean there's still a long way to go now uh, but I mean just integrating schools then was was caused right caused these major it, it caused the calling out of the army basically to, to put down black protesters the white army to put down black protesters um, so he says, you know, I'm about to get sick from watching my TV, um, until my eyeballs fail to see this, this concept that the, uh, the television is producing this overflow, um, is something which Hare will talk about how the, the Vietnam war just pours into people's living rooms. And as, as, as I mentioned, is going to be called a living room war while well, I will mention me mentioning this. Um, and he says, um, it's just another rotten mess. And so it's not a hopeful song. I mean, he's, he's, as he says, I'm hoping and I'm waiting and I'm hoping for the best. Um, there's trouble coming every day. So then he says, um, he watches the cops and uh, the, he's not happy, obviously, about either side here. Um, and then he... And then he takes on, <laughs> then he takes on the television. He's very, very good about the television. He says, "Well, you can cool it, you can heat it, because baby, I don't need it. Take your TV tube and eat it." And it's like, "Hey, baby, cool. what is this? This what this refers to is basically. He's like, he's not, he's not aligning himself with any of the movement. It's like, you know, hey, baby, you know, cool it, be chill." Um, he's like, "Well, you know, you can cool it, you can heat it." Like, I, he's he's not uh, he's not thrilled with any of these positions. Take your TV tube and eat it. The, the tube, the TV was called the tube because it really was a tube. It was a picture tube. It was like a big light bulb, effectively. Um, and then he sort of goes off on a, a nice uh, sort of takedown of the uh, chummy, uh, friendly, fake world on, of, of television. You know, the all that phony stuff on sports and the unconfirmed reports. And then he says, you know, I watched that rotten box till my head began to hurt. And your head actually did hurt because of the, the flickering. I mean, the, the, the tube, the television tube was a raster, um, it was raster technology, which means there was a gun, a, an Ultron gun at the back of the tube. And it was painting the screen very, well, relatively quickly. But it painted the screen. The screen, first of all, had these, the bar, the lines in the screen were quite visible. I mean, we're used to these very, very high resolution screens now where you, you really can't, pers your eye isn't aware or your brain isn't necessarily aware the screen is flickering. Um, it is flickering. The, it's flickering on ex at an extremely fast rate. But at the time, the television set was flickering on, it was like on and off, on and off. And, You'd get a massive headache because you was the eye strain, and you know, as you were watching black and white, oh, you know, it was the picture wasn't clear and sharp, and it was fuzzy, and you know, you try to get closer. And, okay, they would always say, you know, get your parents would always say, you're too close to the television, back up. Um, until my head began to hurt. Um, 
And then the he and he also is very clever about not giving channel recognition, right? He won't talk about who it is. You know, it's not CBS. He says, you know, before the guys on channel so and so, and further they assert that any show they interrupt uh, to bring you news if it comes up. Okay, so this is the um, if the place blows up. So the uh, what would happen when you were watching a show was that there was no way of getting the news out to people rapidly it really you either had to wait for a morning paper if think something bad happened overnight you waited for the morning paper or the evening paper which there were evening papers uh or the radio which is actually what you would most uh, i certainly rely we certainly relied on the radio it's because the radio would update the news every hour the television would break into your program and they would this is where the you know now back to your regularly scheduled programming comes from because they would break into your program and they would say you know urgent uh you know the nation waits as uh, john kennedy has been shot uh, we don't know any further on about the story blah 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 uh, now back to your regularly scheduled programming so he's talking about that so they're going to break in and tell you you know oh, the world is over because it's a nuclear war uh, that if the, they say if the place blows up that they'll be the first to tell because they got boys they got downtown are working hard and doing swell so they've got the best you know this is the the best news team uh, if anybody gets the news before it hits the street they say no one blabs it faster the coverage can't be beat so they're they're advertising while well, the world is ending they're saying you know we're, we brought you the world of the end of the world news first if another woman driver gets machine gun from her seat they'll send some joker with a brownie and you'll see it all complete so the brownie is a little is a little camera at the time was the cheapest um sort of in, like an instamatic which was a kodak camera which sort of guaranteed you a reasonably good if if wide angle picture <laughs> so you could get a picture so you didn't necessarily have to know what you were doing with a brownie camera it was sort of the standard box camera that kind of everybody had it was affordable um and then he says and then he's got this thing about you know i'm not black but there's a whole lot of times i wish i could say i'm not white and so then he goes on talking about the the riots now what's important about this and it's interesting here he says um there's a sort of propulsive quality to this song i think partly because it does gradually speed up and it gradually gets more and more intense and i think it gets more and more desperate um and the narrator becomes um less and less calm i guess about you know how things are going because it's uh, things just get are getting worse and worse so at some point he says um because the fire in the street ain't like the fire in the heart which is really interesting i mean this the, it's just such I don't know it's such raw naked poetry um don't know that this could start around and go yeah don't you know that this could start on any street in any town in any state if any clown decides that now's the time to fight for some ideal he thinks is right and a million more agree there ain't no great society okay so the great society programs and I'm gonna be talking about this this is um but I have talked about it to some extent as in the background. And this is Lyndon Johnson's real legacy. Uh, well, two legacies that Johnson, <laughs> you cannot separate them, as I said. The Vietnam War, which is one of his, very, very much one of his legacies, and the Great Society Program. If we didn't have that, we wouldn't have Medicare, which was, was going to lead on to Obamacare. And we wouldn't have uh, Johnson knew how to get the congress to agree to put through legislation for uh integrate school integration and equal rights treatment basically the end of the jim crow laws and so on okay so uh blow your harmonica son okay so that's that one